Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I've come out into the garden today because it's a very nice day, so a bit of a change of scenery. I thought I'd do a video outside. Um, I wanted to do a video today on um, supplements, uh, and in particular I wanted to talk about why you see calcium and vitamin D often in the same formulations, and why you often see vitamin C and iron in the same formulations. Uh, now I understand a lot of people will realise the nutritional reason for this and, and this video is possibly not for those for those people but many people uh, are watching these videos for the first time and they're perhaps not aware of why um, these these vitamins are, uh, and minerals are often uh, placed together. Um, now it's very interesting um, when we look at the metabolism of calcium and vitamin D it's very complex and I don't want to go into the, uh, the intricacies of it now but I'll give you a brief overview. Um, of why vitamin D is often uh, linked to calcium and associated with calcium uh, and then obviously why they're put in a, a formula together. Um, vitamin D uh, is produced mainly uh, in the skin from the action of ultraviolet light. Uh, vitamin D then passes to the liver um, and this is uh, here it's converted to 2,5-hydroxy uh, uh, vitamin D uh, and this is actually the biologically measured metabolite of vitamin D. So when you see vitamin D status being measured in, um, in scientific papers, they usually measure 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D. Uh, and subsequently, the 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D can be converted into 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D in the kidney. Uh, and this has then uh, cellular, cellular effects. Now, one of the effects of 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D, which is also called calcitriol, is to um, it, there's a high affinity receptor for that compound on enterocytes in the gut. Enterocytes are the absorptive surface of the uh, of the human uh, gut. Uh, there are receptors there, and when the one two five hydroxyvitamin D, um, sorry, when the one two five dihydroxyvitamin D binds to these receptors, uh, it creates um, it changes the um, uh, the genetic uh, expression in those cells, and they express protein that is then um, uh, rearranged and uh, uh, and placed in the cell membrane, and that those um, uh, proteins in the cell membrane. Uh, are transporters that allow the absorption of calcium. So without the uh, without adequate vitamin D, what happens when you've got low levels of vitamin D? Uh, the absorption of calcium decreases, uh, and this is why calcium is placed often in supplements uh, supplements in the formula with um, uh, uh, with vitamin D. If you have a vitamin D deficiency and you take a calcium tablet. Uh, you will absorb less of the calcium. Uh, there is a, a restriction because those transporters required for calcium absorption uh, are obviously not optimized in the gut. So the theory is that if you provide vitamin D in the supplement, uh, you will therefore uh, allow an optimal absorption of calcium. And that's the reason why vitamin D is often placed uh, in uh, formulas uh, with calcium. So you'll see many of them on the shelves. If you go and buy your supplements, you'll see calcium on its own. You'll see vitamin D on its own. But quite often you'll see calcium with vitamin D and that is uh, the, the nutritional reason behind that. Now if we go to the next uh, the next supplement I want to talk about and that's uh, vitamin C and iron. Um, vitamin C is a very popular dietary supplement. I've suggested one of the most popular um, and uh, iron is also uh, actually the, the most common nutritional deficiency in the world. Um, now the thing to understand about iron is iron when it's in a tablet form when it's in vegetable form, it's called non-heme iron. And there are two forms of iron, non-heme and heme iron. Um, heme iron, where does, where does heme iron come from? Heme iron is uh, basically hemoglobin or myoglobin. If the, heme, if the iron is part of a hemoglobin molecule, which is a, a, a protein that, that, that carries oxygen around our, our blood, or if it's part of a myoglobin molecule, which is a, a protein that absorbs the um, oxygen from hemoglobin and pulls it into skeletal muscle. Um, if the iron is part of myoglobin or hemoglobin, it's called heme iron. Um, when we eat uh, animal foods, we're eating heme iron because we're eating the flesh of the animals, we're eating the blood of the animals that's in still in the skeletal muscle, uh, and therefore we're eating heme iron. Now, when we eat vegetables, um, and when we eat supplements, we, we, we're actually consuming non-heme iron. In other words, the iron is not in the form of hemoglobin or myoglobin. Now, the difference is that heme iron is very well absorbed. And this relates to the chemistry of iron. Um, heme iron contains uh, a, a, an iron, uh, iron that is Fe2+. Plus. 
okay and non-heme iron contains an iron ion that's iron i-r-o-n and iron i-o-n uh, as an fe3 plus molecule now that means that uh, fe3 plus is uh, oxidized uh, and fe2 plus is reduced relative to to themselves uh, and this is this is relevant because the transporters in the small intestine that absorb iron uh, have a preferential affinity for the fe2 plus the reduced form of iron um, so if we consume uh, meat if we consume flesh of animals including fish obviously uh, we consume the fe2 reduced form of iron and that is readily absorbed and this is why uh, i recommend if you're not a vegetarian to consume red meat or fish uh, once or twice a week simply because it's a very good source of iron and iron is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world if you consume uh, if you are a vegetarian and you, you get your iron from uh, vegetables or you get your iron from supplements you're consuming the fe3 uh, plus uh, form of iron uh, and it is in its oxidized form and the transporters don't uh, readily uh, absorb that form of iron now many many studies have been done on iron uh, dating back many decades uh, and it's fairly well understood the chemistry of iron uh, in the gastrointestinal tract if you take the fe3 form of iron from uh, for example vegetables or a supplement and you can reduce the oxidized fe3 plus to fe2 plus um, you can succeed in increasing the absorption rate of that iron and that is really why vitamin c which is ascorbic acid uh, is put in a formula with iron uh, vitamin c is a reducing agent uh, it's a, uh, that's another name for an antioxidant it it, it, uh, it reduces the fe3 plus to fe2 plus and that therefore increases the absorption of the iron and that is the reason that you will find uh, vitamin c uh, in supplements along with iron you're effectively trying to um, change the uh, ionic form of uh, of the iron from the fe3 plus iron to the fe2 plus iron um, now there are other ways to do this <clears throat> if you wanted to increase the absorption of iron you can also uh, in, you can also take the iron uh, consume the iron with meat uh, there's been a number of studies that have shown that if you consume uh, the fe3 plus form of iron in plants or supplements with meat um, the the fe3 plus becomes reduced the same uh, way as the fe2 plus is already in the meat and this is possibly because some of the amino acids such as cysteine are also reducing agents uh, and they may reduce uh, the fe3 plus to fe2 plus and that therefore increases the absorption so their formulations of vitamins are quite often you know they're quite well thought out and, and these are the two most common and i was just in the uh, supermarket the other day just looking at the calcium and i realized that most of the calcium formulas there had vitamin D as well uh, and I thought this was possibly quite confusing to those people who are perhaps non-nutritionally uh, uh, you know uh, uh, trained those who are perhaps uh, you know watching these videos for the first time just looking into nutrition um, so I hope that was interesting and informative next time you go and look at your supplements if you're thinking about buying some supplements um, you know if you if you want to get calcium with vitamin D uh, that's a way of optimizing your vitamin D intake at the same time. The disadvantage of this obviously is that you lose control over the uh, the, the amount of, uh, of vitamin D and calcium relative to one another that you can consume. If you take calcium separate to vitamin D, uh, you can increase one or the other relative, uh, you know, re relatively. Uh, if you take them in a formula that is fixed in a ratio, uh, you have to stick to that formula. And the problem with that is that quite often these formulas uh, have too much calcium and not enough vitamin D. They were they were based. Uh, these formulas were made when uh, less was understood about the the optimal amount of vitamin D in the diet. And we now know that the amount of vitamin D we need is much higher. And therefore, in order to be able to get the optimal amount of vitamin D from these supplements, you end up having to take too much calcium. So that's one disadvantage of them. They're obviously convenient if the ratio is correct uh, for what your 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 needs are. And in terms of um, vitamin c and iron many people take iron supplements many people go to the doctor and get iron supplements because they're borderline anemic uh, i've said it time and time again iron supplements don't really have much of an effect on anemia you need to take them for a long period of time and you need to take them with other things in order to be able to reverse that anemia if you do have an iron deficiency and you're not vegetarian the best way to get rid of that iron deficiency is to consume lots of red meat um, 
that doesn't mean you have to consume red meat for the rest of your life. Consume large amounts of red meat until you've got rid of your iron deficiency and then you can uh, moderate your intake again. Um, and, and that's the best way to, 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 to get rid of your iron deficiency. If you are a vegetarian, you don't really have much choice. You're going to have to get your iron from uh, supplements or uh, from, um, uh, from, from vegetables. And in that case, I would recommend that you look at the uh, absorbable forms of iron that are perhaps amino acid chelated. Uh, there are more expensive forms of iron. Uh, there are a number of uh, very good vitamin companies that make uh, amino acid chelated iron, and they tend to, that tends to increase the uh, the absorption somewhat. Um, so there, there's some there's some food for thought if you next time you have a look at supplements. And I hope that was interesting. Um, if you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave them in uh, the comments box below. And as always, I'll try to get back to you. And I'll see you next time for another video.